So for our uh, next speaker, uh, pleased to introduce uh, Rafiq Awan, who is a VP and principal uh, for uh, Wellington Management, where he is responsible for the architecture or the architect design and development of investment book of record, uh, IBOR applications within the investor and portfolio technology group. With more than $1 trillion in client assets under management globally, as of September 30th, 2017, Wellington Management offers a broad range of equity, fixed income, alternative, alternative and multi-asset investment approaches. Wellington's most distinctive uh, strength is rigorous proprietary research, which is shared collaboratively across all areas of the firm. Rafiq has been with Wellington since 2003, and his team is mainly responsible to provide advanced investment data solutions. He has more than 20 years of experience in IT as a manager, architect, designer, and developer. Rafiq earned a master's degree in computer science from Kadim El Azam University in Islamabad. Um, please welcome Rafiq. Good morning, everyone. How's, uh, how was this morning? Everybody doing good? So uh, we've been really listening to all the IT topics, right? I will uh, try to make it light and sweet. Um, so I want to talk about uh, how innovation in technology and cloud environment made things so much simpler to solve any complex business problem which were very hard to solve just about 10 to 15 years ago. Uh, however, this is only possible when we think of any business problem as a golden opportunity and know how to leverage latest technology to solve a given business problem. I have learned this very important lesson uh, when I was just 12 years old. I grew up in a very remote village in Pakistan where uh, poverty rate was very, very high and literacy rate is still very, very low. My father was a farmer and shepherd and he worked very hard to make and meet for our family. This all happened when my older brother had a fight with the neighbor kid. So our neighbors were in a relatively stronger position than us. And they filed a fake criminal case against my father, my mother, and my older brother, who was just 15 year old at that time. So my father was sent to prison, unfortunately, and our family was in crisis. I went to my uncle for help, who was the most influential person in our family, but he refused. So I was really shocked, hopeless, and in tears. I had no one left for help except God. So I turned to my guard and asked for his help. At that moment, I promised myself three things that I would like to share with you, with all of you today. Number one, I will work and study very hard to do something exceptional in my life. Number two, I will get my family out of this poverty. And number three, I will not abuse my power like the neighbors did. So I had a long journey but I'm very happy to inform all of you that my family is now well settled. 
I not only help my family, but I have, I have helped many other families in, this, in my village and continue to help and plan to help many more families in future. So I had no idea that why my family was going through crisis and sufferings. But now, when I reflect back, I realize that I would not be standing in front of you, in front of all of you today, if that incident would not have happened in my life. I still remember this incident like yesterday. And this has taught me that we can overcome any problem, whether it's personal or professional, by continuous learning, thinking outside the box, and having a positive attitude. So as IT professionals, the question is, how did I apply all of this lesson that I learned when I was just 12 years old, and how all of us can apply? So moving on, as all of us know that IT world is changing very rapidly around us. And those old days are gone when one monolithic database like Oracle was enough to solve any business problem. I, I assume that everybody agree with that, right? Please speak up if you don't. Um, so, so the question is that within, our, if, if you just think about it, within last 15 years or so, the advancement in database technology, especially from monolithic to purpose-built purpose databases, and from database-driven design to use-case-driven design, and especially the DevOps culture, has created countless options for us to solve any business problem in most creative ways. But the challenge that we have is that given there are so many options available to us, we don't know what's the right tool for the right job. And that's what, as IT professionals, we need to really figure out. Uh, I was uh, reading one of the articles, I think the Amazon CTO recently published, uh, I think I believe back in June. Uh, I would really recommend all of you to read when you have a time. It says that a one size fits all database, one size fits all database, doesn't fit anyone. I think he's, he's really spot on. So, so I want to talk about um, that I want to really share our experience that how we really leverage Apache Ignite, grid gain, and the latest technology in the cloud environment to, in order to optimize the iBoard architecture. Uh, you guys, uh, for some of you actually over here last year, I had a keynote on um, iBoard especially in the context of historical data. And um, I think one thing, I, one thing that I shared last year was that given we had a huge amount of data to deal with, more than two terabyte, uh, we had to really complement Apache Ignite with Apache Spark to solve the problem that we had. Today I'm not going to talk about the big data problem uh, the historical dimension of IBOR, but we'll focus more on the most recent data, current data of IBOR, which is obviously not that big, as, it, as big as actually we had in case of historical IBOR. But the question is, all of you must be wondering, what is this IBOR? <laughs> so, so before we talk about how we actually optimize IBOR architecture, 
let's step back and think about or talk about what is IBOR. I think in layman terms, you can really think of IBOR as a single source of truth at Willington, which is used by portfolio managers, portfolio managers, risk managers, and compliance managers in order to maximize return for the Willington clients. This is a use case which involves stream of events as a result of trading activity, accounting activity, and all other related back office activity. So all these real-time events uh, flows through IBOR and needs to be processed in a lightning speed. Uh, and the output of all these real-time events needs to be represented with an IBOR in a way to provide accurate, complete, and uh, consistent information. And then this information is really used by our portfolio managers, who are really the investors, who really manage money for our clients to make best investment decision for our clients. So you can really imagine how important it is to get this right. OK, so moving on, I assume you understand what IBOR is. Uh, I think at the IBOR is obviously is a complex use case, so I thought it's less, let's break down this into three kind of key components of IBOR. So, uh, so the first component is event processor. So as name implies, this is the component which is really responsible, as I mentioned, that there are stream of events as a result of trading activity, accounting activity, and other back office activities. So all those events needs to be processed uh, in a, in a real-time way. So that's the component which is actually doing the job. And then second component is the data processor. So that's, a, that's the core component of IBOR which really contains and maintains all the IBOR data, which includes, uh, obviously, all the instruments, prices, analytics, trading transactions, accounting transactions. For those of you who actually are familiar with the financial in, uh, industry, it's, it's, that's all activity. Basically, you can imagine like all your 401k account, right? So all that activity is really the one that's actually maintained uh, by this component. And third component is really the, uh, which is also very important, which we call it IBOR services. So that's a component which is really used by the IBOR consumers. So all the clients which are really using IBOR, so uh, it involves high intensive compute calculations to provide all the market values, exposures, and performance for, for, for the client portfolios. So, so with that, I, now I really would like to talk about these three components one by one and how we really leverage both of some of the key features in Apache Ignite, uh, especially in a cloud environment. So let's start with the event processor, right? Uh, given, uh, I assume that everybody is really familiar with Apache Ignite here, right? So you can really think of the Ignite service grid, that's the one we're really using heavily in this, in this component. And um, so this is, a, this is a, as I said earlier, that's very, very important component, right? And um, it's, uh, this, it's given so important that it needs to be highly available and highly scalable and needs to be very resilient. So the question is, how did we really make this component available, scalable, and resilient? We have achieved the high availability and scalability just by running this component in multiple availability zones. So for those of you actually are not familiar with the availability zone is really, you can think of the data center, multiple data center running in one region. So Amazon called them availability zones. So in this case, on the slide I've shown availability zone one and availability zone two. So 
event processor one is running in AZ1, and event processor two is running AZ2. And uh, uh, so, uh, so given that this component is running in more than one availability zone, if one availability zone, our data center actually goes down, there, there, is no, there is no impact to the application because other component will take it over. And the reason this is resilient is that this is really the cool feature of Ignite Service Grid. Uh, I'm sure you guys heard about this cluster singleton and node singleton. So cluster singleton feature is the one that if you want to run the service in a cluster only once, not only once, but only one active service, and the sec second is just kind of in a standby mode, which automatically takes over if the one service goes down. So you can set up that as a cluster singleton. It's all configuration. But if you want to have the same service running on multiple nodes in different availability zones, you can set up that as a node singleton. So, so, uh, so what we have done is so we really achieved the res uh, resiliency of this component by using these uh, excellent features of Ignite Service Grid. Okay, so uh, moving on to the next second component, which is the known as iBoard data processor, aka Ignite data grid. Um, so again, uh, this, is, this is the core component of iBoard, right? So you can really think of this is really the heart of iBoard. I mean, without heart, iBoard is going to go down. Uh, obviously, it will be that. So, so the, so the iBoard data itself, uh, very similar to like the way we actually set up or install the event processor, we have the iBOR data component running in more than one availability zone, in this case, AZ1 and AZ2. And this component needs to be consistent, given this is uh, money involved, so it needs to be very con highly consistent and obviously durable and uh, at the same time high available. So what we have done is, uh, for those of you who may be familiar with the Ignite feature uh, called Write Through, so as you uh, as you can see, once the data is updated in this iBoard data component, it is written through Oracle, right? So the, we are really using, without any writing new code, we are really using this Write Through feature of Ignite. As we update the cache, the data is being persisted in Oracle using Write Through. And uh, we achieve uh, consistency because the Ignite data grid provides asset compliant. So any data that you are updating uh, is actually consistent as well. And one other thing which is very, very important in this case is that all the caches that we have as a part of this IBO data component, we really set up those as replicated caches. I mean, for those of you actually may not be uh, familiar, is like there are two type of caches that organize for like replicated and the partition cache. So in this case, we're really using replicated cache. What it means when you update one cache, primary cache, the data is automatically written to the second cache, which is running in AZ2. So, so that's really, uh, so as you can see that by leveraging the AWS and the Ignite, we, we accomplished a lot by having this, uh, we're able to achieve all the goal that actually we wanted to achieve for this component. And uh, the third one is really the iBoard services compute grid, uh, ACA compute grid. So this is, again, as I mentioned earlier, that this is, uh, this is really the iBoard brain. Uh, it, it is a very important component as well because this is the component which is used by all the clients or all the consumers of iBoard to provide all the market values, exposures, and performance, and everything that client needs, right? And uh, so for this component, uh, one thing which is very important is given this involves high intensive compute calculations, so it's extremely important that data needs to be co-located. So data and compute, you really want to do it on the same node or on the same server. So Ignite Compute Grid actually provides that feature uh, without having you a lot of, writing a lot of code. You just know how to leverage it. And uh, one other thing that was very important was that uh, some of the use cases 
that we had from the consumer, they wanted to have a SQL support. So they, we, wa they, we wanted to, we need to really provide the search capabilities against eyeball data. So what, so we're really using Ignite SQL uh, to provide search capabilities against eyeball data. And uh, then, last but not the least, uh, this IBOR DR. And as you can imagine, uh, given IBOR is a mission critical application, and we have more than one trillion asset under management, so it's very complex. Uh, so it's very, very important that we really think about uh, the worst case scenario in this case, right? So, so we really, uh, just a quick disclaimer that this, we haven't really done this in prod. We are still trying to work on it. But based on what we have discussed so far, the plan is that we will be running two instances of IBOR. We are calling it primary instance and secondary or DR instance. So the primary instance is going to run in uh, Amazon East Region 1. So for those of you actually familiar with the AWS, so that's Virginia. And then we are going to run the DR instance in East Region 2, which is Ohio. So, so what we are doing here is that all the applications, so application that will be running in the primary instance and updating all the data in, uh, in the primary instance. And then we are going to use write-through feature to persist data to Oracle. And that Oracle is also in running in the same region, which in this case, uh, Virginia. And then once data is written to uh, Oracle in Virginia, then there's a database replication which replicate data from region one, in this case from Virginia to Ohio. And finally, the DR instance actually, by using read-through, uh, we are actually making that data available in the DR instance, which is running in Ohio. So that's how we actually, uh, we are planning to actually accomplish the disaster recovery for IBOR. Uh, again, as I said, that this is not fully done yet, so there may be some gaps or something that we need to figure out. Right now, this is uh, initially is going to be active-passive, but our eventual plan is to have active-active uh, configuration, given how critical this is. So just to conclude, um, I think that going back to my theme, that the theme of the discussion is that we as IT professionals need to make sure that we really actually find the right tool for the right job. And that's the hard part. And there's so much technology and so many th options available to us. So we just need to make sure that we actually use the right tool for the right job. And so in this case, just to sum it up, what we have done is that given IBOR needs to be very highly available as we talk about it, so we achieved that just by leveraging some of the features which are already available in Apache Ignite. One is the replicated caches, we talk about it. We also talk about the cluster singleton. And then the second is needs to be highly scalable. So we have achieved that by using node singleton service uh, feature available within Apache Ignite. And last, the highly recoverable, then given this needs to be, we need to really recover in a fast way. So we are really having this instance running in more than one region more than one region uh, within AWS environment. So uh, with that, we are hiring. So we are always looking for uh, great IT professionals. So if anyone's interested, please let me know. Thanks a lot.